Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Randy Seltzer here. Uh, today, we have two special guests on the program today. We've got JP Laporte, Jean-Pierre Laporte, who is an expert in pensions, and he's with a company called Integris Pension Management Corporation. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about um, when you form a personal corporation and some of the benefits and some of the strategies you can use uh, creating your own personal pension plan. And we've also got Robinson Smith on the call today. Rob is a best-selling author of a book called The Smith Maneuver that I understand is becoming rapidly famous uh, around the world, uh, where people are using the strategies outlined in that book to turn their non-tax deductible mortgage payments into tax deductible payments that can be associated with it on a line of credit. So guys, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Welcome back. Nice to see you both. Great to be here. That's great to be here. And first correction of possibly many, Randy. Oh, the here we go. Here we go. <laughs> the book's title is Master Your Mortgage for Financial Freedom. Ah, Master Your Mortgage for Financial Freedom. Well, okay. Okay, Rob, sorry. We got that right now. So um, I guess we're going to start off, though, with JP. Um, JP, if you want to introduce yourself a little bit, and then uh, we'll sort of start into the pension information. Yeah, as you said, I'm a pension lawyer, been pra practicing pension law for over 20 years on uh, Bay Street in Toronto, helping uh, very large pension clients, some of which you probably know, like the Teachers Pension Plan, Ontario Hydro, mm -hmm. and so forth. And I uh, quickly realized that, unfortunately, in the small private sector, people were not being provided true gold-plated pension plans. So my mission in life has been to bring that solution to the, the small and medium-sized enterprises in Canada. Well, I know we, we had a chat, uh, I think it was back in November, um, and what sort of prefaced all this was that uh, certain categories of self-employed people can now incorporate into a personal corporation, such as realtors, and this also applies to lawyers and to accountants, and that present some opportunities with personal pension plans. Uh, most people take it for granted if they work for a large corporation that the pension plan is just there with legacy jobs. Nowadays, maybe not so much as there used to be. And for self-employed people, it was not really something that most people thought about. But in our last talk, uh, JP, we, you, you explained to me and you really opened my eyes uh, some of the possibilities that are out there where you can uh, set up a pension plan and uh, use it to do all sorts of interesting things, including investing. I don't know if you want to delve into a little bit more about that. Well, that's, that's exactly it, is that Canadians typically uh, are taxed personally on their income, unless they're incorporated, in which case their corporation gets taxed first. Right. And uh, the tax laws allow us, and it depends on the province, but in Ontario where I am, uh, where we are, Randy, the uh, small business uh, tax rate on the first $500,000 is only 12.2%, whereas Amazing. the personal rate is 53.5%. Yes. Yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's really, it's a huge difference. So the thinking is, well, if you are a real estate agent and you now have the right to incorporate, or if you're a real estate broker and you already have a corporation, or you're, as you said, a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, and you have a professional corporation, doesn't matter you can receive your income through your corporation and at least on the first $500,000 pay at that low rate. Now above that, above $500,000, it jumps to 26.5%, but that's still pretty good compared to 53.5%. So that's step one. Once you've incorporated, you have this tax deferral opportunity. Step two is to take it further, is to say, well, you know, Instead of paying 12.2% or 26.5%, why don't I pay 0%? Why don't I defer all of that income by uh, sending it to a personal pension plan, a plan that my professional corporation has set up for me as the beneficiary? You're and talking my language. I know. You're talking my language here. That's right. So it's a, it's a nice drop from 53.5% to 0%. But then where it gets even more exciting is that once you've contributed pre-tax dollars from your corporation into your own pension plan, that money can now be invested, for example, doesn't have to, but it can be invested in private real estate. This is the part that blew my mind the last Well, that's right. Talked. All you brokers and oh. mortgage brokers and real estate agents out there, now there's, there's a new source of capital for commissions. Here's a way to take retirement money and put it in an asset class that's dear to your heart private real estate. 
which is much, much more difficult to do if you have an RRSP. The last right? time we talked, you explained to me, and uh, this again was an eye opener, that yeah. uh, you can purchase real estate through your personal pension plan and you can yeah. hold it and you can sell it within that pension plan. There's no capital gains, even if it's an investment property. You don't even have to declare rental income. That to me is mind boggling for, for because, as a loyal Canadian. And we all know we pay way too much tax. Mm -hmm. uh, so JP, that's just unreal. Yeah, no, it's not tax exempt in the sense that you'll never pay tax. It's deferred. tax deferred. Right. But still, I would right. rather pay a dollar of tax 30 years from now than a dollar of tax today, because it Absolutely. doesn't have the same power. So um, we're, on, we're, we're on a theme here, folks. And uh, we're talking about avoiding taxes in Canada. And if you're in Canada, or no matter where you are, it's always a good thing to try to avoid the tax man. Uh, I think most Canadians will agree that we pay way too much tax compared to other countries. Doesn't matter where you are in the country. You could be in Ontario. You could be in Quebec. You could be in the beautiful province of British Columbia. You still have to pay a lot of tax no matter what you do. But Rob has come up. He and, and he's, he's part of a family tradition here where his dad originally came up with an idea on how to convert that mortgage, those mortgage payments that you make, which are non-tax de deductible in Canada, they are deductible or the, the interest portion of our deductible in the US, but not in Canada. But Rob's dad came up with this idea called the Smith, Smith Maneuver, pardon me. And, um, and Rob has taken it to the next level. So welcome, Rob. If you tell us a little bit about, there's another of a way to avoid some taxes and to make use of that money called the Smith Maneuver. Yeah, it, it, basically, you know, the, the term avoid legally i like yeah yes absolutely but basically you know we canadians have the legal right to structure our financial affairs to our best tax advantage yes and that is exactly what we're doing with uh when it comes to setting up a personal pension plan or whether we're implementing the smith maneuver the smith maneuver is a very powerful strategy for the canadian homeowner because as we know when we get a mortgage it's very expensive it's not tax deductible it's huge takes a big cut of our paycheck yep the interest on that is not tax deductible, which gives us a big disadvantage to our American cousins. I mean, they can deduct a large portion of their mortgage interest. But the, the Smith Maneuver strategy, which was developed by my father back in the mid 80s, so it's been around for almost 40 years now, uh, it allows us to convert that non-deductible mortgage interest to deductible interest. And the only way we get this tax relief, which can be significant, is if we're investing in assets which are gonna appreciate in value. So when, when you implement the Smith Maneuver, you're going to start reducing your tax bill. You're going to be able to get rid of your mortgage much quicker than otherwise possible because of this reduced taxation. And we're necessarily acquiring assets which are going to increase in value. It requires a certain type of uh, mortgage product called a readvanceable mortgage. Now, almost every bank has a readvanceable mortgage, but they're not all equal. And this is why you know, I created the Smith Maneuver Certified Professional Accreditation Program. We've got a network of specifically trained mortgage brokers, investment advisors, accountants who can help Canadians implement this. So it's, a, it's important to get the right type of mortgage. But once you have it, uh, you're going to see all these benefits, uh, which, you know, as you mentioned earlier, we, we do pay a lot of tax in, in Canada and it's not going to get any easier. We are converting the nature of this debt to our advantage and requiring assets, which otherwise we wouldn't be able to acquire. So the last time we talked, uh, you explained it to me and you, I know you had to go slowly because it takes me a while to catch on to things. But uh, so basically if you're tying a certain kind of mortgage, the readvanceable mortgage tied to a line of credit. And as you pay down that mortgage, the line of credit automatically increases. You then use that line of credit to purchase investments, which are tax deductible. That's how it works. That's right. Very simply right. put. Yeah. The, the, the readvanceable mortgage, the line of credit recognizes when you pay down any of that non-deductible mortgage debt, which is your mortgage payment or any prepayments, right. the line of credit limit increases dollar for dollar. You can pull that out and borrow to invest, which generates the tax deductions, et cetera. A lot of Canadians are pulling it out to make car payments, uh, mm -hmm. go on vacation. They're consuming it, right? right. So they're, they're paying down non-deductible debt here and they're acquiring non-deductible debt there. Right? Not, That's not the greatest. Right. So yeah, it's a very powerful strategy for the Canadian homeowner. Uh, it gives us a leg up on the Americans because they can deduct, deduct the interest. We Canadians cannot. However, we get the capital gains exemption when we sell our primary residence. The Americans sure. don't. But sure. now we get the best of both worlds. Very powerful strategy. And 
when we want to generate these tax deductions, we're talking about investing in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, investment, real estate, mix, REITs, a whole bunch of different things. But to tie in, you know, with what JP does, we can borrow to invest in our own company, in our own corporation, and deduct the interest expense. So, so that qualifies. And now we're starting to see how implementing the Smith maneuver can augment your your corporation, the working capital in your corporation, which frees up funds from revenues, which can be used to stock your personal pension plan. Okay. Well, so, well, so Randy, if, yes, go ahead. Sorry. If I may just jump in. Sure. A, a lot of um, business owners that we speak to will say to us, I love this personal pension plan, but I don't have any cash flow. I spend everything. I need everything for salaries and payroll and, and buying supplies. So I'd love to start saving for retirement, but I can't. So now, thanks to the Smith Maneuver, we can say to those same business owners, aha, don't give me this as an excuse, because if you have a readvanceable mortgage on your residence, we can pull from that line of credit and give working capital to your business, as Rob was just explaining, freeing up money to invest in the personal pension plan, which could be in real estate. Doesn't have to be real estate, right. but you know if it's an asset class that the individual really likes and trusts and is diversified away from stock markets, what a great way to build up a pension plan now, not 30 years when you start having money now and claim tax deductions along the way. Let yeah, me make go sure ahead. I got, let me just make sure I got this straight. The Smith maneuver will work for any Canadian, right? You don't have to be a professional who's incorporated. No, that's, that's correct. If you're right. a Canadian homeowner, it doesn't matter if you're incorporated or if you're okay. a school teacher. Okay. But if you are, if you happen to be a professional type of person and you've entered into a personal uh, corporation of some type, then you can use the Smith maneuver to sort of accelerate whatever investments you're going to be making and put that into your corporation or into a personal pension plan. And then the, I mean, the whole sky just blows wide open. So go ahead, go ahead. sorry. So, so with the traditional Smith maneuver, and Rob can correct me, the, the key advantage, one of the key advantages if we don't do any of these special accelerators is the fact that by claiming a tax deduction on the interests that you're, you've been charged by the bank, you're getting a personal tax deduction, therefore a tax refund. And that refund can be used to pay down the principal faster. So instead of 25 year, you might be 22 years. So that's deduction number one. But when you do the enhanced Smith maneuver, meaning the Smith maneuver applied to a business, then not only do you have that accelerated, that, that ability to pay down your, your principal faster, your corporation is also claiming a tax deduction when it's contributing to the pension plan. So when the corporation starts making money, instead of sending money back to CRA in the form of corporate taxes, it can redirect it back to you to repay your shareholder loan, which means you can turn around and put that money towards paying down your principal again. So there are two methods to accelerate getting rid of your principal. Yeah, it's important. It's important that the flow of funds is done correctly, whether you're investing into your corporation via share purchase or a shareholder's loan. And it's important that when you pull that money back out from your corporation, you put it in the right spot. But this is <clears throat> this is where you know the Smith Maneuver Certified Professionals that we have across Canada will will assist. Uh, JP's organization can help in the in the setup of the personal pension plan. The uh, Smith Maneuver Certified Professionals, the SMCPs can help with the setup of the Smith Maneuver, the, the process and the flow of funds. You guys blow my mind. You really do. Um, and, and I can see how the two strategies combine for, for a certain set of people, the professional type of people who are incorporated. I mean, that's just, it's, it's a marvelous combination. I mean, well, I'd I, imagine, I'd imagine that all the realtors out there, the mortgage brokers who have real estate in their blood, mm. um, have been investing in, in real estate, uh, because they're believers. I wish I had done more. I can tell you that basis, much. Yes. Right? On a taxable basis. Yes. And so that, that goes away now. Because if you can grow your wealth, thanks to the Smith Maneuver in a tax sheltered environment, for the same amount of capital, you end up much further ahead very quickly. Because you don't have constantly the tax authorities taking money off of your non-registered account, which is what's happening in a traditional Smith Maneuver when people don't have access to a personal pension plan. It's great, 
but we can make it even better. And this stuff is all approved by the CRA. Like they know, I know they know about it and they're cool with it. Well, they probably don't like it, but it's legal and it's perfectly acceptable to do this. You know, to to that comment, Randy, firstly, the Smith Maneuver has been in operation for almost 40 years, as I said. Right. Uh, When I was an investment advisor, I had CRA employees that I put into the Smith Maneuver. Okay. Uh, Cops, lawyers, (laughs) judges. Right. Um, To the other point, the... One might look at this and say, well, the CRA is, is getting less money because of all these tax deductions that are being earned by someone who is implementing the Smith Maneuver. Well, we got to think, why is, why is the government or the CRA offering these tax deductions in the first place? It's because the CRA knows that if they can incentivize people to borrow to invest, then these Canadians who are borrowing to invest are going to invest in companies and allow these companies to grow. And the CRA has that increased Uh, revenue to tax on the company. Mm -hmm. The company needs to hire people to run their growing business. They've got these incomes that they now can tax that they didn't otherwise have. So Mm -hmm. yes, we're losing a bit over here as far as the CRA is concerned, but we're gaining it over here with the improvement in the economy, the improvement in in the the profitability of corporations, increase in employment. And and, and Randy, from from a public policy point of view, I don't know if we talked about it the last time in November, but when someone accumulates more wealth thanks to a PPP, that means that they're going to get less old age security and definitely no guaranteed income supplement from the government. Yes. So on the true. one hand, the government is saving billions of dollars in taxes because the burden has shifted from the public purse, those public pensions, to the private shoulders of the taxpayer who's looking after their own retirement through their PPP. Exactly. So there's a yeah, public I, would like to, I, would like, I would like to think that the CRA recognizes that a financially better off Canadian is a financially better off Canada. And as, as JP said, I mean, well we, st- we spend billions of dollars on social programs because people are financially unable to take care of themselves. So the taxpayer has to. But if they utilize these, these financial strategies that are available to them, the Smith Maneuver, the PPP, other, other strategies out there then these people are better off and they don't have to go to, as JP says, the public purse. So not only are we spending less money on tax, but we're also being good citizens in a, in a <laughs> roundabout way. We are. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, Randy, the, the other thing too is from a big macro perspective, Canada and not just Canada, all the developed countries in the world, they need the formation of capital to do big things like convert our economy to a more green economy, a more sustainable economy. Yes, that's going to co- cost trillions of dollars over the long haul, and you can't ask a small saver with a bank account to do this. You have to go to institutional money, pension plans, for example, foundations, endowment yes. funds, sovereign wealth funds. These are the players that have the financial wherewithal to make it possible to convert our economy. So it's really in the government's best interest to facilitate what we call capital formation. And pension plans are part of that solution. Oh, they're huge. huge. So that's why they're helping out. I just read, I just, I just saw my newsfeed this morning that the, uh, the Royal Bank building in downtown Toronto, the one with all the gold in the glass, uh, was just sold apparently to some Spanish multi-billionaire. And uh, guess who the seller was? A pension plan. It was a pension plan that sold it. So it wasn't Royal Bank that owned that building. It was, I think it was the teacher's pension plan. They, they're, they're tenants. Yeah. Unbelievable. So yes, pension plans have a lot of money and they are definitely big players in the world. Um, well, this, you know, I'm glad we, that we got together on this call, the three of us, because both of you guys, I mean, you're, you're sort of approaching similar issues, similar problems from opposite ends, but the end result is kind of harmonious. Um, the Smith Maneuver on its own is absolutely fantastic and everybody should be doing that. And for both of you guys, as before, I'm going to put your contact information underneath uh, the video and in the podcast. Uh, But when you think about the possibilities, when you combine the two, let's say you are a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer or an accountant and you self-incorporate, man, there are some amazing possibilities here. And I can see how the Smith maneuver basically is going to help you to generate cash. It's going to help you to generate cash. And then when you make those investments within the personal pension plan, the PPP, uh, I mean, that's just a wonderful container to uh, make those investments in, I think. And on the PPP side, uh, it, it gets even bigger as JP, I think you probably know where I'm going with this. 
You know, if you've got all these <laughs> professionals, independent uh, individual professionals uh, having okay. their own PPPs, right? Well, where do you go there? Right? Oh yeah, right, right. So <laughs> thanks for the. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you if one million dollars sitting in a PPP is not enough to buy a building, for example, but you have, I don't know, a law firm with with a hundred partners and each one sets up a PPP and therefore you have a hundred million dollars to play with, all of a sudden, the type of real estate you can purchase is quite different. And for the real estate agents who are listening, the commission you get on purchasing a hundred million dollar building is different than if you're just dealing with a $1 million home. Well, mortgage, oh, I guess. Yeah, these days. Yeah. Or in Toronto, it would be a shack. A million dollars, <laughs> a garden shed in the backyard, garden right? shed in Rosedale. Yes. So, so uh, that's true. You can pool pension assets uh, in an organized tax exempt manner to achieve much larger levels of wealth, and therefore uh, it opens up the the realm of private equity or private real estate, I should say, investing. And that's a good point, Rob. A lot of people might say, "Well, I can't do it on my own." Well, you don't need to do it on your own. And that's why the Smith uh, Maneuvers Certified Professionals can come in handy because they know a lot of people that are trying to do these types of investments. So they can be a good uh, first point of contact to build your own little investment group to go into real estate, but do it in a tax exempt manner. What do you think of that, Randy? I'm speechless, guys. I'm just sitting here digesting what you're saying. It is, you know, it's all good stuff. And on our previous uh, encounters, I tried to play kind of devil's advocate. I was looking for something. There must be something where there's a risk or a downfall. And, and there really isn't. I mean, there's always my, every time you make an investment, there's a, an element of risk involved with it, whether it's real estate or the stock market or whatever asset class you're looking at. But in terms of, of uh, tax avoidance, legal tax avoidance, I mean, I think it's a slam dunk, both of them. And I think I can, even I can see how the two programs would work well together. Even I can see that. So you got my vote. What can I no, say? Yeah, you know, on, on the I frequently get asked, you know, what are the, what are the risks of the Smith maneuver? Who is it appropriate for, and who is it not? And, and the answer lies, you know, I always say every Canadian homeowner should at least look into it, and then uh, yes. have someone they can consult decide if it's for them or not. Because the Smith maneuver relies, if you think about it, on maintaining your total debt. Because as fast as I'm paying it down, I'm borrowing it back. Right. And a lot of people have been raised be mortgage free. Be mortgage free. Be clear title to that house by the time you hit retirement, at least. We've we've got all this equity in our home for all of these years, and it's been growing and growing, and it hasn't been put to work, earning less than zero yeah. percent. So financially, we know that from a monetary perspective, it makes sense to put that money to work, nice and conservatively, and not get risky here. But for some people, that concept of always having four hundred thousand dollars of debt regardless if we're converting the nature from bad to good or 800 or whatever it is they can't get past that and that's going to yeah. make it uncomfortable for them to implement the strategy right. i mean i have a lot of people as clients husbands and wives and the husband wants to do it let's say and the, and the wife says i'm not too sure about it right they end up doing it anyways and then there can there can be friction so if if not everyone is fully on board it might not be worth it but you know, then there's, then there's a risk of the fact that I'm using someone else's money to invest. Eventually, they're going to want it back. What's the, what is the performance of the investments versus the cost of the money, et cetera. For sure. But, you know, we look back at what Canadian equities have done, U.S. equities have done over the past 55, 60 years. And yeah, we can meet that hurdle of what the money costs me and more. As long as we're psychologically, we stick to the program, markets go up and down, don't panic. Uh, all of these things that you're going to hear from every investment advisor, they, they ring true. But you, you want to look at the strategy, make sure it's for you. Uh, and if it is, we have people who can help set up and implement the strategy. And if you are incorporated, bam, we're, we're getting some really good value by combining the two strategies. But, but Rob, Rob, isn't it true though, that you told me that if the rate of return you're getting with the line of credit that you, you're investing is the same as the rate of interest charged by the bank, you're still net positive. You're still going to be creating wealth. Well, you thanked me for my prompt to you earlier, and I'll thank you for this prompt, JP. Yes, you're right. Because you guys, okay. All right, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> because if I've got uh, a 6% interest rate that I'm paying on the money I borrow to invest, 
the real rate on that money, if I'm at the 50% marginal tax rate for ease of math, it only costs me 3%. And if I can't beat 3%, there's something terribly wrong going on. And with current rates, you know, prime at 2.45, that'll go up. But currently, you know, 3% money, that only costs me one and a half percent if I'm at the 50% marginal tax rate. So it's, it's, you know, that's one of the common misconceptions is that if I'm paying 6%, I need to make 6% to break even. And that's not the case. And what's really interesting when we combine the Smith maneuver with the PPP is that let's follow the money. You, you borrow money at 3% from your HELOC, adds to your working capital. So you freeze up money to invest in a pension plan. You buy a GIC that's going to pay you 1% interest. The 1% is even less than the 1.5% you're supposed to earn to keep the system in equilibrium. In a pension plan, if the rate of return on assets is less than 7.5%, the corporation has the ability to do what are called special payments, top-up payments, and those are tax deductible to the corporation. So if the corporation is paying tax at the low 12.2% in Ontario, by making the special payment, you're actually creating a 12.2% tax saving. Even when you have a really, really low rate of return within the pension plan, it's not that low because you have tax assistance at the corporate level. So when the corporation is making money, instead of taking $12.20 $12 for the government, they keep it in the bank account. So the fact that you've underperformed actually gives you more tax deductions at the corporate level. It's a weird aspect of pension laws. Wow. But it kind of ties in with our previous discussion about trying to keep the rates. I'm, what I'm saying is that we have another margin of safety we're using a, a, a pension structure and not an RRSP or, or a non-registered account. One of the questions I asked both of you guys the last time is, what is your target uh, demographic? What's the, what's the best age for people to be, if, if they're considering doing the Smith Maneuver or if they're considering setting up a personal corporation with a PPP, what would be your ideal demographic? When should they be doing this? I'll lead off, JP. The The Ideally, you want to start the Smith Maneuver as young as possible. That gives you the longest amount of time to enjoy the tax deductions, mm. uh, to enjoy the compound growth of your investment portfolio. Um, but it relies on owning a home. Right. And you need at least 20% equity. Now, not a lot of 30, 35-year-olds uh, out there own a home, especially mm. in areas like Vancouver, Toronto. Right. And if they do, it's likely they have less than 20%. Right. Oh, here comes my dog. <laughs> um <laughs> But if you do have at least 20%, then look into the strategy. Now, when you start getting older, 35 to 40 to 45 to 50 to 55 years old, your income is going up, your marginal tax rate is going up, the effectiveness of the tax deductions is improving. Then you start getting into 60 or 65 years old. A lot of Canadian homeowners still have a mortgage at that point. Mm-hmm. But there's not necessarily as long a period of time to enjoy compound growth. Now we've got the Smithman calculator and you can punch everything in and it'll, it'll give you all the, the projected debt benefit and everything. But the younger you are with just about everything, the sooner you start, the better off you're going to be. And uh, it's the same thing with pensions. If you're able to put capital aside in a tax sheltered environment for longer periods of time, obviously it's going to generate significant more wealth than if you wait till the last minute and then you decide to, to sign up for a pension plan. Uh, of course, people are, would be saying, yeah, but I don't have any money when I'm young. And that's why the Smith Maneuver comes in handy. Because if you are able to get a mortgage on a home and you do the Smith Maneuver, then you can end up saving at a much younger age towards your retirement and taking advantage of Smith Maneuver over longer periods of time. So I would say that the, you know, by age 18, 20, is a good time for a pension plan if you are in a family business. If your your parents have started a business, they should create a family plan. But if you don't have that luck and you're just a professional and you have to go through the different professional schools before you can incorporate, right. then I would say uh, in your early 30s is when you should really seriously consider a PPP. If you're 50 years old, is it is better? It too, is it too late? Or no, no, no. We still get we, started. We sign up people all the way to age 71. That doesn't mean wait till you're 71. It just means we have the legal right to sign you up. Guys, once again, I'm kind of speechless when I listen to both of you. 
Uh, it doesn't happen too often, but um, uh, I urge anyone listening to the or watching the video today or listening to the podcast to really look into both of these guys because they have fantastic strategies and fantastic products uh, that can help you, especially if you're a Canadian. I don't know if Americans could use this, but if you're a Canadian, which is our target demographic, uh, you should definitely be looking at both these things. The Smith Maneuver, absolutely, hands down, slam dunk. And if you are in the type of job where you can or where you can incorporate and set up a personal uh, pension plan, absolutely, you should be contacting JP at Integris uh, because these guys can both help you out. I think we all agree Canadians pay way too much tax. And using these two strategies, I think, are especially combined. You start thinking about it, man, it's, it's, I don't know if you could put a number on it, but if you started using that extra money through the Smith Maneuver over a period of, let's say, 20 years, and then you were able to incorporate, sort of accelerate those, those uh, tax, not exempt, but tax deferred investments, you could, I forecast that you'd literally double your net worth than if you didn't do that. I don't know if you guys have been able to do studies like that or any, if anyone has, but I can just see you're, you're freeing up extra money that you would never have seen in the first place or am I way off base there? I don't know. Well, no, I mean, like when it comes to the Smith maneuver, people are letting this equity molder in their homes, earning yes, less than molder. I like that. You know, one of the reasons the wealthy are wealthy is because they know the difference between good debt and bad debt That's and right. they put their equity to work. And JP is doing now what, what I'm doing, which is, you know, taking, taking a system out there and trying to get it out to the Canadian public. You know, there is a way you can improve your finances via the Smith Mover. There is a way you can increase your financial security if you're incorporated, you know, for JP. I would just urge people to look into it. It may not be for them, but you don't know until you look into it. Well, it's been another excellent talk, guys. JP, do you have anything to add? You're no, I just, I'm just so happy that we have a chance to speak to your listeners about this stuff because if we can help them, then you know, I feel like we've done something good today. Well, thank you and Rob as well, both of you guys. Thank you so much for coming back on board. And uh, I know we get a lot of positive feedback from this, both on YouTube and on the podcast. So anytime, anytime you want to come back on, you're more than welcome to. And we'd be, be happy to have you on board. So Thanks, thank Andy. you, gentlemen. Always Thank a you. pleasure. Have a great day. And hopefully we'll talk again soon. Take you care. You got it. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Bye now.